Today you, tomorrow me. Just about every time I see someone, I stop. I kind of got out of the habit of it in the last couple of years, moved to a big city and all that. My girlfriend wasn't too stoked on the practice. Then some shit happened to me that changed me, and I am back to offering rides habitually. If you would indulge me, it is a long story, and has almost nothing to do with hitchhiking other than happening on a road. This past year, I've had three instances of car trouble. A blowout on the freeway, a bunch of blown fuses, and an out of gas situation. All of them were while driving other people's cars, which for some reason, makes it worse on an emotional level. It makes it worse on a practical level as well, with the fact that I carry things like a jack and extra fuses in my car, and know enough not to park facing downhill on a steep incline with less than a gallon of fuel. Anyway, each of these times this shit happened, I was disgusted with how many people would not bother to help me. I spent hours on the side of the freeway, waiting, watching roadside assistance vehicles blow past me for AAA to show. The four gas stations I asked for a gas can at told me that they couldn't loan them out to me for my safety, but I could buy a real shitty one gallon one with no cap for $15. It was enough each time to make you say shit like, this country is going to hell in a handbasket. But you know who came to my rescue all three times? Immigrants. Mexican immigrants. None of them spoke a lick of the language, but one of those dudes had a profound effect on me. He was the guy that stopped to help me with a blowout with his whole family of six in tow. I was on the side of the road for close to four hours. Big Jeep, blown rear tire, had a spare, but no jack. I had signs in the window of the car, big signs that said, need a jack, and offered money. No dice. Right as I'm about to give up and just hitch out there, a van pulls over and a dude bounds out. He sizes the situation up and calls out his youngest daughter, who speaks English. He conveys through her that he has a jack, but it is too small for the Jeep, so we'll need to brace it. He produces a saw from the van and cuts a log out of a down tree on the side of the road. We rolled it over, put his jack on top, and bam, in business. I started taking the wheel off, and if you can believe it, I broke his tire iron. It was one of those collapsible ones, and I wasn't careful, and I snapped the head I needed clean off. No worries. He runs to the van, gives it to his wife, and she has gone in a flash down the road to buy a tire iron. She is back in 15 minutes. We finish the job with a little sweat and cussing, and I am a very happy man. We both are filthy and sweaty. The wife produces a large water jug for us to wash our hands in. I tried to put a 20 in the man's hands, but he wouldn't take it, so instead I gave it to his wife as quietly as I could. I thanked them up one side and down the other. I asked the little girl where they lived, thinking maybe I could send them a gift for being so awesome. She says that they live in Mexico. They are here so mommy and daddy can pick peaches for the next few weeks. After that, they are going to pick cherries and then go back home. She asked if I had lunch, and when I told her no, she gave me a tamale from their cooler the best tamale I've ever had. So to clarify, a family that is undoubtedly poorer than you, me, and just about everyone else on that stretch of road, works on a seasonal basis where time is money, took an hour or two out of their day to help some strange dude on the side of the road where people in tow trucks were just passing me by. But we aren't done yet. I thanked them again and walked back to my car and opened the foil on the tamale because I am starving at this point. And what do I find? My $20 bill. I whirl around and run up to the van, and the guy rolls his window down. He sees the 20 in my hand, and just shaking his head like no, he won't take it. All I can think to say is por favor, por favor, por favor, with my hands out. Dude just smiles, shakes his head, and with what looked like great concentration, tries his hardest to speak to me in English. Today you, tomorrow me. Rolled up his window, drove away, his daughter waving to me in the rear view. I sat in my car, eating the best tamale of all time, and I just cried, like a little girl. It had been a rough year, and nothing had broke my way. This was so out of left field, I just couldn't deal. In the five months since, I have changed a couple of tires, given a few rides to gas stations, and once, went 50 miles out of my way to get a girl to an airport. I won't accept money. Every time, I tell them the same thing when we are through. Today you, tomorrow me. The end. All right, that's the story, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. It's a little bit different than the past one about girlfriend revenge. 
Um, but I think that's the point. I think I'm going to do all sorts of stories for this Reddit story series. Um, they're going to be happy, sad, serious, depressing, funny, gross, because that's what Reddit is. So um, next one will be three of the grossest stories on Reddit. Um, so I think that one will be coming out maybe two or three days. If you have any suggestions for stories from Reddit that you would like to see, you can leave them in the comments. And if you have any suggestions for the series in general, you can always leave that. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys later.